Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to my channel. Um, I completely forgot about last week and realized I was supposed to like post on Friday and I never did so sorry about that. But um, I'm back. I know I'm kind of posting late. Um, today I'm going to be doing, as you've read in the title, the mixed girl tag. Um, I have, one of my friends has been pestering me to do this since I started YouTube for a very long time. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go for it today because I didn't really have any ideas for, um, my vlog for this week, nor last week, so yeah. So, question one is, what are you mixed with? Some of you already know the answer to this, but for those of you who don't, I am Mediterranean and Caribbean, or Sicilian and Trinidadian. Um, there are other stuff mixed in, but to keep it just, like, simple across the board, that's what I tell people when they ask what I am. Question two. What ethnicity have you often been mistaken for? <laughs> well, I'd have you guess, but your guess would be right. So, yes, for all of you thinking it, everybody guesses that I am Spanish. Specifically, Dominican. All the time. This question so stupid. Is your hair curly or straight? That answers that. Question four. Was coming from different backgrounds challenging growing up? Yes and no. Growing up, I felt like I had more so of my Trinidadian side because like we were, we hung out around my families more. My Trinidadian family babysat us and we'd make some like traditional dishes like roti and curry, which is really cool, and like bussa, oxtail, all that good yummy stuff. If you know, you know. Um, I wouldn't say it was challenging. I just think over time, like we stopped seeing my Trinidadian family as much. So as a result of that, um, I wouldn't even say I became, so people would say I became more white. I would just say like, I was just more Americanized, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Question five, which background do you embrace the most? I wouldn't say that I embrace like one over the other. My dad isn't the most um, cultured Italian. He's just a guy from Bayside. So Bayside, New York, for those of you who don't know. So yeah. Question six, have you ever been teased? <laughs> have you ever been teased for being different? Um, I don't think teased was the right word. I would say that um, my class was like split up, for using school as an example, my class was split up, split up into three groups, I would say. You had like the kids who didn't, who just like did their own thing. You had the Spanish girls and you had the um, black girls in my class. And again, I never really like looked at color because I just grew up so, so diverse. If I liked you and I wanted to be your friend, that, that was really all that was to it. But um, I know when I was, you know, trying to be friends with like some of, I guess that group of girls, the, the black group of girls in my class, um, they always made me feel like I just wasn't black enough. I don't really know what that means. Um, I guess culturally we were just raised a little different or whatever. So um, I don't know, I was always told I was like whitewashed and I wasn't black enough and it was like incredibly frustrating because it's like what what does my ethnicity have to do with just being your friend um yeah and then the spanish girls in my class kind of just like i don't know they were my friend they they thought i was them and they found out i wasn't but they kind of liked me anyway just because i don't know it was me and i don't know i'm friends with them to this day so yeah the most frustrating part I wouldn't say it was necessarily being teased, but was always being told like I wasn't black enough and I was whitewashed. I, I don't really, like, like what does that mean? But I don't know. Question seven. Have you ever struggled with being, struggled or were ashamed of being multiracial? Yes. Um, I felt like at the time I was growing up in like high school and stuff, I never really saw anybody like me on TV, in magazines, um, modeling. I felt like it was more so like, it was either like black or white. There was no one like in my, in between, where there was, but there wasn't a lot of representation. Um, so I always tried to like, I don't know, straighten my hair, beach waves were in and 
you know, I'd feel ashamed of like my beautiful, you know, curls that come from literally both sides, not just like my black side, like Sicilians are mixed with African Americans. Like there's so much cultural diffusion in that history. And I believe I get a lot of my curls from that too. But um, yeah, I was definitely ashamed of like a lot of my black features because I already felt like I was, I'm half black whether I look it or not. That's in my blood. Question seven, this is a good one. Have you ever been ashamed of being multiracial? Yes. Why? For two different reasons. One, I felt very um, shunned by the black community within my school because people always told me I was uncultured and I wasn't black enough and I was whitewashed. Um, and as a result of that, I kind of just like tried to completely shun that part of myself and be just embrace the white side of me but the reality is like no matter how much I straighten my hair it didn't make me as white as I tried to be it just didn't you know what I mean um I also think media played a big toll in it too because like I felt like I, there was no representation or not as much representation for multiracial people in um Hollywood at the time I feel like it was either black or white people and um, I didn't see like an in between and it was kind of like frustrating so, like I, I want to know I want to see someone like me up there and I feel like everybody wants a little bit of representation um, so you can like relate and I didn't feel like I related with anyone um, in you know social media or Hollywood and um, it made me feel like a little ashamed and try to just embrace like I don't know being white question nine what makes being multiracial a beautiful thing um, I think what makes it a beautiful thing, trying to follow me here, is um, that there's already like, there's, there's a multiracial group, right? And there are so many people within that group that like are so different and complex in their own way. Like, I don't think I've met any multiracial person that has the same mix as me and I've never met one the same as someone else, if that makes any sense. And I think that is a really like a beautiful thing and super exotic and something I take so much pride into. Like no one can like take that from you and I don't know, it's just beautiful. And last question, question 10. So the last question is any advice to someone who struggles with their multiracial identity? And my advice to you is Whatever about yourself um, you don't like because it resembles um, a, the culture of you that you just don't want to associate yourself with, own that trait of you. You know, whether you know you feel like you have too much melanin in your skin or your hair is like really, really kinky and curly, like own it. You know, the more you try and fight it, the more you're just gonna be, um, the more upset you're gonna be with yourself because you're trying so hard to be something you're not. I feel like I found a lot more inner peace when I just accepted like what I was and I didn't try to like completely shut off one side of me because I couldn't. That was the reality of it and um, yeah, so my advice to you is own the parts of yourself that you hate for whatever reason that might be and learn to use that to your advantage and realize that, you know, those traits make you gorgeous and exotic and beautiful. So yeah, if you guys liked this video, don't forget to like and subscribe um, to see more content. I come out with content every Tuesday at 10. So yeah, see you guys in the next video. Bye!